Judges, may I? Uh, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Um, again, I've introduced myself as Carl Price, the prosecutor that's assigned to this case. I just want to take, an, uh, take a brief moment here just to ask a few questions, um, and then I'm going to sit down. And I recognize that this is Friday afternoon, so I'm going to try to be as brief as I possibly can. Um, First, the judge has inquired about uh, your prior jury service, and I understand that this is the end of the first week. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, for those of you who indicated that you served on a jury, uh, be it civil or criminal, was it anything about that experience that upset you at all? Anybody? Mr. And, and, and also, please bear with me. I've made a chart in about 10 seconds of, of, of your name, so if I mispronounce it, uh, please charge it to my mind and not my heart. Mr. Scott? Yes, that's right. Uh, yeah, I felt that, that both parties were at fault in some type of way, and the, the plaintiff could have got some kind of settlement as far as, you know, the unstable work environment and just wasn't enough facts leading up, and he didn't have nothing to happened and it went on but I felt like both could have you know took a loss from that you know as far as the case and not one should have got one over the other I don't know okay and the feelings Mr. Scott that that you're left uh, having experienced that from that particular trial does it uh, uh, does it put you in a position anyway one way or the other as to how you're going to approach uh, no, this I'm particular criminal like case majority rules as far as out of 12 jurors that nine's going to make the decision whether or not if it's, you know, going to happen or not, you know. So that's more or less like my opinion matters, but only if eight other people agree with me. You see what I'm saying? Okay. And that gets me to another point. And it was, was there anyone else? Uh, Miss uh, Hawkins? Yeah, I said Please. the same way he did. It was like three of us. I was one with him. So it was just like, you know, majority overruled our Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else in reference to what uh, you've heard Mr. Scott and Ms. Hawkins uh, comment about? Okay. Let me, let me just piggyback on what both of uh, 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 these citizens have indicated, and that is that uh, it brings me to the point of the difference between a civil and a criminal case. Do, you, do, do each of you all understand that this is a criminal case that, that uh, uh, that we're about to try in this court today. Each of you all understand that? Is there anybody who doesn't understand that this is a criminal case? And the difference between a civil case and a criminal case that, you know, there is a verdict and the verdict is required to be unanimous. Do you all understand that? Yes. Okay, so uh, um, we get a little bit away from that. It, 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 Ms. Hawkins and Mr. Scott, are you all okay with that? Uh, yeah, I'm okay with it. It's an experience. It's the first time I've ever gotten to do this and learn how the whole system and jury works. But, I mean, I didn't really technically agree with the whole situation, but, I mean, it's just how it works. The judicial system is, you know, 12 jurors go and they reach a verdict. Nine is going to be, you know. Except in a criminal case. Except right. in a criminal case? Absolutely. See, I didn't know that, so you learned something new, I guess, okay. for a new case. Okay, okay. And we'll talk a little bit more about that before I sit down. Okay. Anyone else interested in making a comment in reference to their, their prior jury experience and anything about that experience that has made you feel uncomfortable, even if it was 10 years ago or 15 years ago or even within the last few days? Okay. Um, it, it, I think I've asked you about the individuals who are, who are here, the uh, Detective Case and Detective Browning and uh, Mr. Spalding, um, do any of you all, uh, and, 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 and I think you all have indicated that you're not familiar with the defendant in this case by the name of Jonathan Masters, is that correct? Anybody knows Jonathan Masters? No? 
Okay. How about uh, the name of Kevin Deaton Jr.? Anyone here have any ties to Gallatin County? There's a Deaton store in Gallatin County. There, is, uh, there are some Deatons there in Gallatin County. There's a Kevin Deaton Sr. that lives in Gallatin County. No? And, and just by, and, and, and I'm, 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 while you all are shaking your head, I'm raising my hand. I'm just going to assume that if you don't raise your hand when I raise my hand, then that's a negative. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. Um, I want to talk to you just in general about the criminal system, okay, uh, and, and, and specifically about evidence. Um, how many of you all watch TV? Can't avoid it, right? <laughs> um, there's a lot of court and a lot of crime shows on TV. You all agree with me? Okay. Um, do, do, you, do you all understand uh, that there is a difference between TV and reality? Y'all, y'all do. I mean, can everybody agree with me that there is a difference between the two? Um, you know, because if it wasn't suspenseful and exciting, then it wouldn't be on TV, right? So, um, I, in the court system, in the real court system, there's uh, uh, lots of types of evidence, and specifically in this particular case, uh, there's going to be a lot of testimonial evidence. Do you all understand that when someone takes the stand, that is considered to be, with, the, with, 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 with just a few exceptions, that that is the testimonial evidence? And even though that's not a piece of paper and that's not an object or that's not a picture, but that is evidence, do you all understand that? And we call that testimonial evidence. Any of you all heard that before? Not on TV. <laughs> OK. Miss um, Callahan? Yes. You started to raise your hand. And I don't Okay, just like an educational experience. You do understand that your role here, uh, part of your role here is to determine uh, the facts in this case. Do you all understand that? Yes. Okay, and you do all, and, 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 and each of you understand that you, de that you determine those facts from a number of, in a number of different ways that the, the uh, criminal justice system leaves to you, but here in the confines of the courtroom, primarily from the evidence that you hear that's presented to you from the case, uh, uh, that's here uh, presented the case, uh, it's here presented today. You all do understand that, is that correct? Is there any one of you here today, just by a show of hands, feel that you're not in a position to determine whether the defendant may be guilty or not guilty for whatever reason, that you're just not in a position to make a determination that this defendant is guilty or not guilty. Okay. Can you all just take a moment? Mr. Shore is the individual who is the, uh, def I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Masters is the, in uh, is the individual who is sitting in the blue tie there, uh, uh, also Mr. Deaton. Uh, sitting there in the blue tie. Can you all just uh, take a look at him just for five seconds, and then you can turn back to me. Is there anyone, just simply by his appearance, believe that there's no way that you can consider the evidence, and if you're convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that he's guilty, to find him guilty simply by his appearance here today? I know that was a long question. <laughs> Everybody understand that? I did. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, can each of you raise your hands and agree with me um, that uh, if you believe beyond a reasonable doubt from the evidence that he is guilty, that you will find him guilty? Okay, thank you all. Now, this is a criminal proceeding, Mr. Scott and Ms. Hawkins. Uh, and what I mean by that is that uh, uh, 
one of the one of the potential consequences here is that uh, this defendant can uh, uh, spend time in jail as a result of these proceedings. Do you all understand that? Yes. Each of you all understand that? And if you all have a problem with that? Okay. Any one of you, when I, I, I you know, I'm going to make this statement. Does the idea of sentencing someone to jail make any one of you feel uncomfortable? Anyone on the first row? How about the second row? Third row? Fourth row? Okay, thank you. Is there any one of you who have what we may refer to often as fixed or preconceived ideals or premonitions, if you will, uh, that there are only certain types of crimes that an individual should go to jail for. Anybody feel that way? Mr. Masters, Mr. Deaton here is charged with. Oh, I'm not kind of getting the whole Mr. Masters Deaton. Is he charged as Mr. Deaton in the uh, indictment or anything like that? No, he's charged as Mr. Masters, but he's also Mr. Deaton. Okay, hang on. Okay, so I don't know why we're referring up to that. Yet. Well, because all of his criminal history and which may be grounds for impeachment judge is in the name that he changed his name for. Well, but it was like this. Okay, okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. Bring it up then. Hang on a second. Hang on. Oh, sorry. And I, th I think the point is this. We're, we're going to get into a lot of this impeachment stuff, and the part of it is if at some point in time and, okay, he's not, we need to refer to him as. As his legal name? Oh, okay. That's master. fine. But hang That's on. Fine. And, it can become an issue under some circumstances. Okay. I'm not going to predict what circumstances, but it can be an issue. Then, of course, you'll be able to ask him questions, and then if he denies it, then you can bring forward evidence that refutes his testimony. Okay. But I think it's just, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to do that now. Okay. Okay. Because we're, we're from just going to confuse people. It's like, where's the other defendant? Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. You know, right? I lost my train of thought. <laughs> All right. Let me just move on to something else. I I, I want to ask something. Uh, uh, you know, just a, a a few more general questions. Um, I guess one of the first general questions is: Is that is there anyone among you uh, in this poll today who? Uh, is related to anyone in the legal system? Okay. I'm going to go back to my chart here. I'm going to go uh, look. The first hand I see is on the second row, and and that's the one space I have blank. Ma'am, yes, ma'am. Ashley McKay. McKay. Okay. Let me put you. Okay. Yes, thank you, Ms. McKay. That's the blank. I have Mc McKay in your spot. What is your uh, last sorry. name again? Uh, come on, go. Let's move on. You got another question? I'm sorry. Evans. Evans. Okay. When you say the uh, Domestic Violence Intake Center, is that here in the Hall of Justice? All right, thank you, Ms. Evans. I think there's a, Ms. Smith? Um, my brother's an attorney, is that the type of? Yes, yes, all right, thank you. 
Okay. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Third role, Ms. Fieldman. Thank you, Ms. Fieldman. And I thought I saw another hand. Let me, uh, is it Ms. Ashlock? Yes. 